When you come to the big Oliver Summer Show, you're going to see something you've never seen before, and that's definitely the case at this 33rd annual Oliver Hart Par Summer Show. John Schnauer from Nebraska. You've got a tractor right here that, what, hasn't run in more than two decades? Yeah, something like that. It's been sitting in the museum in Charles City, Iowa, the Floyd County Museum, for quite a while without running. This is the experimental tractor, the Oliver XO121, built in 1953 to test high compression engines. Their hope was when they did it that they would be able to make a more efficient tractor with more power. And they pretty much doubled the power for the same cubic inches by going to 12 to 1 compression ratio and high octane fuels. Oliver really kind of did innovate quite a bit over the years that the company built tractors. Uh, this one even has a badge that says ahead of tomorrow on it. Tell me a little bit about what you think they were trying to accomplish in the 1950s. Well, they just wanted to be, like it says, ahead of tomorrow. They wanted to be ahead of everybody else in making the best tractor for the farmers. They never obviously went to 12 to 1 compression ratio on a farm tractor, but about five years after they built this tractor, they came out with the Oliver 1800 and the gas tractor was one of the most efficient tractors tested at the Nebraska test facility as far as a gas powered tractors. And that was what they were shooting for. They never planned to sell this tractor. The 12 to one compression ratio, that really kind of changed what happened in terms of what you put in the fuel tank, right? Yes, the equivalent now is aviation gas or race gas. Back then, Ethel Corporation, which pretty much made the high compression fuels, they had to blend special fuel just for the tests on this tractor. And what about the power? What did it do in terms of, you know, horsepower and engine function and all that? This is the equivalent to an Oliver 77. At that time, it had about 35 horsepower. Then cubic inches, they had more horsepower than an Oliver 88, which would have been 45 horsepower. They were really close to 50 horsepower with this engine. And it, it was more efficient than anything they had out there. It was amazing what they did. And the style that they put around this uh, test tractor, one of a kind, right? Yes, it is one of a kind. They built one tractor. They built three engines for testing. And it pretty much looks like the Super Series, which came out about a year or two later. The grill is completely different. Instead of having horizontal slots, they're vertical. They did a lot of interesting stuff. I suppose that's engineers playing. <laughs> <laughs> having a good time, just like you guys do as collectors. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's all about showing off what you made and what you did. And uh, the only thing I'd say is maybe the paint job is a little backwards, right? Yes, it is. I guess that was one of the other things to make it stand out. It's just the opposite of what the, in 53, they had the Fleet Line series, the 88, 77, and the 66. They were green body, red wheels. They changed it up, went backwards on it, and the chrome grill was quite different. Yeah, very different. So is this tractor, looking pretty much like it has ever since they built it or has it been restored? Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it was restored when they found it in uh, 87. Some people from Charles City, one of the guys was going to school at Iowa State and it was mentioned that they had had the XL 121 and that perked him up because he knew about the tractor. He was Oliver person and they found it. It was, went to the Living History Farm in Des Moines they used it to pull trolleys around to get people around, but being that it needed to have high, high octane fuel, they could never get it to run right. And they finally just parked it in a shed and the guys from Charles City, the Floyd County Museum were very lucky to find it where they did, when they did. And they took it home, fixed it up, rebuilt two of the engines. There's still a third engine to spare if they would ever need the parts for something, but you know, They've got everything together. You know, they did a pretty good job of fixing it up. It's not show quality, but it shows what they did with it, what they wanted to show. 
So for you driving the XO121, uh, how does it drive? Is it any different than some of the Super Series tractors? Actually, it drives very similar to the Supers. It just sounds so much different. The sound is the amazing thing for me. What do you like about it when you're up there? It's just knowing that I'm driving a piece of history. <laughs> you know, it's, it's fun. Uh, like everybody says, everybody that they put on it yesterday, everybody that started it, you know, there was a big smile when it started. And this is, like I said, it's on loan from the Floyd County Museum. It's feel honored to get a chance to drive it. Absolutely, and that's generated a lot of excitement here at the Oliver Summer Show. Yes, it has. I wasn't here yesterday, but the guys said every time it started when it arrived, every time it started, the, the room where it's being shown just filled up with people. What a, what a treasure, right? Yes, it is. It's amazing. I'm glad we got it here and glad got it running. All right, John Schoenauer from Norfolk, Nebraska, and he's driving one of the very rare, one and only experimental Oliver tractors out there. It's a piece of history that he's helping to tell the story of. Hey, thanks for catching Classic Tractor Fever. If you'd like to see more Oliver tractors, be sure to check out these other great stories. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep our Oliver tractor stories rolling.